this is a, almost like a rapid fire, uh, short little uh, set of three questions. So let me start the first one, which is what is in the last one or two years or what's an inspiring book that you might have read or a podcast that you might have heard, which you might want to recommend to our audiences? Well, I think um, the interesting book that I read was about the use of money. See, I'm a finance guy. Uh -huh. Okay. And for me, I mean, I mean, I'll tell you the author's name later. You know, I got it here. The use of money where the question came up, what is money and how money can morph into very different things in a system where money is no longer a medium of exchange controlled by a, a central authority. Right. And the thesis was very clear. The thesis was that, uh, look, uh, how is uh, you know, how is money created? Money is created by fiat by central banks. How is money used and how is money, uh, you know, actually valued? And can we have substitutes for money, which can be something else? And that is the entire crypto market that is coming up. And the logic behind that is a very, very simple that you want to create an alternative where the value of the money will be retained and not subject to uh, destruction because of uh, you know what you say uh, will be uh, you know uh, you know too much of uh, too much of money the world has 25 trillion dollars of uh, money that has been printed as a stimulus and that's suddenly not going away and that has its own repercussions so i will uh, i think i think that is one and the second was a, a article i read on the metaverse mm -hmm. uh, how how the metaverse is going to bring virtual reality and reality together seamlessly so that an individual can morph from being a real person to a virtual person. And uh, it's their time will come and the virtual avatar and the real person uh, can be together in the mind. Absolutely. Not be together everywhere, but it can be in the mind. And that means our whole way of changing, uh, working uh, will, will change. I think, I think these are the two things that uh, I read which uh, deeply impressed me. Because to me, Every time I read something new, even if it's a short article or a viewpoint or a tweet, immediately it goes into my hard disk and my neurons connect to find out how that could impact something else. So I have this ability to go from the macro to the micro and the micro to the macro in the same instant to understand how it could impact and to rationalize, rationalize it myself. Because please remember, in every book or every article, there are only one or two ideas which are the central ideas. And once you catch yes. the ideas, the rest yes. of the stuff is just detail. It yep. doesn't matter. Absolutely. So what is the idea, basic idea that people are trying to push and how things are going to happen? And I think if you understand these two ideas, uh, I think, uh, you know, it'll be remarkable. Fantastic. I, I think you touched upon the second question that I actually had, which was about what is uh, your learning hack? So if you had to, uh, you would have learned in very many different ways and use different kinds of tools and methods and processes. Um, but what's one learning hack that you have found useful, which you'd like to share with the audience? Well, my, see, my learning has been built over the last 50 years. As a child, I used to go to the library. It's a different world then. Right. And uh, read all kinds of books for one or two hours every single day. And weekends, maybe four to five hours. I must read about 15, 20,000 books. I forget the titles of books. But when you're young and you're reading, all that you read gets accumulated into your hard disk here. It remains in your memory. Yes. And then every time you see something happening, the neurons connect and you know, give you an insight into how it could impact somewhere, this, that, and everything else. So you could look at something and immediately come up with four or five ways of doing things. And that is a skill that you must cultivate when you're very young. Yeah. So my idea of learning is to read across the spectrum going from sociology through anthropology to psychology to anything that I read. Now, right now, it is mostly digital, mm -hmm. uh, you know, less books, but mostly digital and mostly articles, etc. Because mm -hmm. you have a 300 page book, it will have one right. central idea, right? And so long as you understand the one central idea that is there, you understand mm -hmm. what is going to come in the book because people have to prepare write 300 pages to sell the book, right? So if you read a lot of articles, you see a lot of videos, etc., you can understand how things were and what is going to happen. That right. is my idea of learning. Second, I'm very privileged. I'm very privileged because we get more than 400 startups coming to our office in very many areas. Many of them send their pitch books and look at the pitch books. You find some very unique ideas. 
Yes. You understand exactly where the innovation is happening, what is happening, what is changing, and what are people trying to push. And this mm. deluge of ideas that come to you, keep you alive. And then you can you can do something. And third, third is because of the reading and understanding of multiple industries, you're able to deconstruct and disaggregate any particular industry. Right. For example, if I look at higher education, I'm able to deconstruct and de-aggregate it from what is there today, like I explained to you, and say what are the components and how are the components going to be disrupted, what can mm. disrupt the component, how can you bring it together, etc. And talk about it and explain how these things could happen. Of course, making it work takes a lot of time and energy because it's not easy. Right. And the reason is very clear. There's a lot of inertia in human beings. And in higher education, for instance, the inertia of the faculty is the highest, is the biggest, biggest threat to innovation. Because the faculty is going to remain, they're not going to go away and they can't learn and they can't uh, redo what they have learned for the last 20 years, right? And they're not going to change very, very fast unless they feel threatened. And the right. last one or two years, they felt threatened, so they have changed. But I think these are the, these are the things that have given me uh, deep insights into how the world is and what it is. Fantastic. Um, the first one I can completely personally relate to as well as an avid reader. Um, and, and, and that's something that is like they call it the food for the soul. Last question uh, of this conversation uh, this afternoon, uh, Mr. Pai. Um, what's the best piece of career advice that you might have received over so many years uh, in, in, in the corporate world? And now, of course, the advice that you give to startups and to young entrepreneurs, what's one piece of advice that you'd like to share with the audience? Well, I think the one piece of advice that I got when I joined Infosys in uh, 1994 from Narayan Murthy, and Narayan Murthy is a brilliant man, unbelievably brilliant. I don't see many people in this country with his brilliance. He said, look, we will not be the largest, we have to be the best. And the advice was very clear. Whatever you do, be the best and set standards. Mm -hmm. Find out the best standards in the world and beat the standard. And when you set yourself the target of being the best in your industry, the, you know, finding out what is the best in the world and building it, you can work. For example, let me look at all the things that we did in Infosys in multiple areas. And today I was seeing a presentation from a friend of mine about that. And you're saying that per capita energy consumption per person there has come down from 295 units per person month to 133 for a period of 11 years. Now that is remarkable in energy mm. consumption. Mm. Water usage has come down from 97 liters per day to 39 for 300,000 people. Now that is big. And that's done over 11 years by a particular method where we want, we change habits, we change uh, practices, we improve practices, we change the design of things, we change the equipment, we monitor it and we reduce waste and uh, we find it could happen. And it's been a long journey because it takes time to redo everything and uh, it worked very well. So, uh, you know, the idea that you have to be the best, you have, and that, that's the best in the world, and the standards are the best in the world, and it's been done quietly. And in every area, you have to be the best in the world, you've got to better yourself. And the challenge is not the world, the challenge is yourself. Correct. You have to challenge yourself, beat yourself to be better and better, and that can come only from ideation, it can come from execution, it can come from dissemination, it can come from inspiring others and working with them and having a long-term plan to make things happen. So to me, that is a big piece of done. Be, be the best that you can be and challenge yourself all the time and obsolete your own innovation. Fabulous. Thank you so much for that. Um, and it's also a great clarion call uh, as we start a new year uh, to be the best that we can be individually uh, and the best that we can be as an organization. Uh, so for everyone listening in, uh, these might be simple words from Mr. Narayan Murthy, but obviously, uh, difficult um, but worthwhile to execute uh, as we go along. This has been this has been so enriching, uh, Mr. Pai. Thank you so much. You. Um, uh, this was very useful. Uh, I'm sure we will get lots of nuggets of advice from this for all the listeners uh, and for all the viewers of this particular episode. Uh, and again, on behalf of my team at Pearson, a big thank you. Thank you.